What is going on guys? Gray for today and I'll talk about the best settings for console for Call of Duty Vanguard. Before I get into all the details, be sure to check out everything down in the description, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliates here on the channel Empire Jerky where you can use code Gray for 5% off and Amazon Associates. That's where I link a lot of things I use every day when gaming, some things you might be interested in. Also check out the merch store that is linked in the description as well. And be sure if you have not subscribed to the channel to hit that sub button. Now when it comes to Vanguard, of course, uh, I'm playing on PS5, but a lot of these settings you will see on PS4, of course, you know, Xbox Series S, X, and Xbox One. And these are the best settings right now. Now, these could change, and if they do, I will do an updated video down the road. But first of all, we're going to look at the controller settings. I'm running a 6 5 uh, sensitivity. That's how I always run it. Some people like to run these two numbers the same. Personally, I just like to have a higher horizontal and vertical. Of course, ground vehicles and air vehicles, I did not mess with. Those are default. My ADS sensitivity multiplier is 0 0.70. Now, personally, I wish we could go in there and set this like we could with Modern Warfare. We actually could set the exact number because Modern Warfare, I was running like a 0.73 to a 0.75. But unfortunately, in this game right now, all we have the option is to kind of go up 10 at a time. And 0.7 is a little bit better to me, uh, kind of starting out than 0.8. If you feel like that's a little too slow, you can go ahead and go up to 0.8. I would never recommend really going over 1. Some players like to go down to 0.9. But somewhere between 0.7 and 1 is going to be the sweet spot for most players. Uh, custom sensitivity per zoom. I do not have anything, of course, in here. But you can change each sensitivity or sensitivity for each zoom level. Might be good if you like to quick scope and then maybe play with ARs and subs as well. That way you don't have to go in and change your sensitivity all the time. You'll have your sensitivity for uh, quick scoping already set. Button layout, of course, I am on a PS5 controller. There's no paddles. I don't have a PlayStation back button or anything like that. So I use Bumper Jumper Tactical. That is one of my favorites to be able to move around, jump, slide, all that kind of stuff. Uh, slide cancels a little bit easier. Some people like to use uh, Stick and Move also for, uh, you know, if you don't have a scuff controller, so you can try that out as well. Vertical aim on foot, ground vehicles, vehicle aim, air vehicles, all standard. Aim response curve. Now, this is where I've changed it up a little bit over the last couple of days in playing. I've been going between dynamic and standard. I'm not a fan of linear whatsoever, but of course that's going to all be personal preference. But dynamic feels more like, I would say, Modern Warfare 2019, where standard does not quite feel like Cold War to me for some reason. But um, you may like standard better. If you like that standard aim assist that's been in Call of Duty for years before they started adding in the dynamic and linear, you might want to go with standard. I've been bouncing back and forth trying to find out which one I like the best, but as of right now, I've been running dynamic. Of course, my vibration is off. Trigger effect is off. I don't like anything affecting any time that I ADS. Of course, I do have my buttons flipped, so I'm shooting with R1 and L1. But if you would like to try out the trigger effects on PS5, they are pretty interesting. But playing a first-person shooter that's competitive, like I said, I don't, I don't like to have anything you know, on my con controller that could really hurt a fight like vibration or the trigger effects. Weapon threshold is off as well. ADS sensitivity transition timing is instant and everything down here as well is left in default. Now when we get down to the L2 button, uh, the input dead zone, if you are using your back triggers to shoot, I would recommend these to be set around 8. The left stick input, you can go down low as you want. Uh, a newer controller shouldn't really stick, but as your controllers get older, the sticks start to drift. I always just set mine to 4 automatically. That feels like the best place for a newer controller. Of course, I've only had my PS5 for about three months. I don't have any stick drift yet, but if you do start experiencing stick drift in one of, one of your sticks, you can go ahead and bump this up until your uh, till, until your crosshair does not move. The easiest way to kind of judge this is go stand in front of a wall in the game really close to it, like in a private match, and see if the dot on your crosshair moves. You don't have to ADS or anything. If it starts moving left or right, you may have to you know mess with your input dead zone. When it comes to max input dead zone for the left and right stick, I left those at default at 99. We're going to go over to gameplay. Uh, of course, target aim assist is set to on and target aim assist mode is set to default. Now you can use precision, focusing, and black ops. Uh, black ops, of course, is going to be more like Cold War. Focusing and precision, uh, precision, I'm not a big fan of. Default, if you're a fan of how the target aim assist mode worked in Modern Warfare 2019, default is what that setting is. Of course, uh, ADS aim assist is on. My weapon mount activation is ADS plus melee. Weapon mount movement exit is on. That way, whenever you are mounted, if you want to move, it will pull you off that. You don't have to hit a button or anything like that. 
Now you can make the delay long, short, or shortest, or longest. I just have mine set to long, which is what is by what is what's kind of set to by default. But short would not be bad either. I messed around with it a little bit, but I still personally just prefer what it was set to by default in long. The pleated ammo switch I have set to on. Of course, this will automatically swap your weapon if you run out of ammo. Some people like this on, some people like it off. It's kind of personal preference. And I do have blind fire on, even though I have not blind fired once <laughs> since the game has been out. Uh, automatic airborne mantle. I have this set to partial. You can set it to off or you can set it to on. I prefer partial, then I like to go in here and turn ground mantle and automatic ground mantle to off. This makes it very easy to uh, slide cancel. If you're a slide canceling fan, I would definitely recommend turning this to partial and turning both of these off. When it comes to mantle stance queuing that is on, automatic tax print. Now this is going to be, you know, kind of what you want. I mean, some people like automatic tax print, some people like auto, uh, automatic ta uh, automatic sprint, some people like to have this off. I prefer automatic tactical sprint. I don't have to push in the button as much and wear out my stick on my controller because, of course, you know, you're using your stick to start that sprint if you're having to press it. And with automatic tax sprint, you really don't have to worry about you know, messing up your controller because moving forward will automatically use that tax sprint if it is available. Auto move forward is set to off. Sprint cancels reload. I have that on. Some people don't like this, but it is nice if you get in a gunfight and you need to reload and somebody starts shooting, you can kind of sprint and slide around a corner and then get that reload. And if you're just, if this is off and you're just reloading out in the open, you're most likely going to get gunned down. But sometimes sprint cancel reload will mess you up. So just keep that in mind. You can try this either way, but I do prefer it on. Sprinting door bash, I have this on. I'm not a fan of all the doors, the wood, and everything in the game. People can just kind of peek through. But I do like the ability to run through these doors if I am sprinting. If I'm trying to get away from something, I can kind of just bust through them. I wish they weren't in the game, but it kind of is to what it is. When it comes to slide behavior, I have this set to tap. Once again, paired with what we talked about earlier with the automatic airborne mantle. And you have this on tap. You will be able to slide cancel very easily. Now, of course, this will change depending on you know some of these settings here you will see the sprint tactical behavior on you can kind of change that if you would prefer but with the settings i have of course that's going to be locked aim down sight behavior is hold equipment behavior of course is hold steady aim behavior is hold automatic weapon fire is hold and interact uh reload behavior i have it tapped to reload if you're a warzone fan you may be tapped to interact this depends on what you're used to if you're playing a lot of warzone you're probably going to be used to some other settings because you might have tap to pick up items. But personally for me, for multiplayer, I like tap to reload. Scoreboard behavior. Now this is going to be how you pull up the scoreboard in game. I have it set to toggle. Uh, you could have it to hold where you just press and hold to bring up the scoreboard. If you let it go, it goes off. That might be easier for some. If you have it to toggle, once you press it, it will stay up until you press the touchpad on uh, the PlayStation controller or whatever button, you know, whatever you're playing on. Uh, you will have that toggle button. You'll have to press it again to get the scoreboard to go away. Now, when it comes to graphics, of course, my safe area is zoomed out as far as it can. I, I play on a 24-inch BenQ monitor, so that is that. But that is kind of why I run it to that safe area that wide. Of course, my monitor is a little bit older. It only has 60. It's only a 60 hertz monitor, so I don't have that ab ability to play in 120 FPS. But if you do, if you have a monitor on console that will allow that, I would definitely recommend turning that on. When it comes to brightness, I am running mine at 48. Now, this is going to be different for everyone, depending on if you're playing on a TV or monitor. This game looks very, very washed out at brighter mode than past Call of Duty games. I would run it up like 60 or 70, but this game feels a lot better. It looks a lot better in my opinion, and it's still very bright at 48. So like I said, depending on what monitor you run, I, like I said, my BenQ is set in FPS mode, which is already bright, uh, barely visible. I don't think you need to go quite down this much, you know, like 46, 47. 48 to 49 is about the sweet spot for me personally, but that's going to depend on how bright your monitor or TV is kind of in the setting that you're using. Uh, when it comes to color customization, I have no color filters on what I did change everything here. My color is yellow. My team color is the dark blue. If I'm playing at a party, it's the light blue. And I prefer to have the enemy colors at pink. Uh, you could do a little bit brighter pink, but I think this more kind of little bit shade darker is best. It's really easy to see name tags at a distance uh, when you have that set. Personally for me, you might like red better or some other color, but I like the pink the best. Uh, when it comes to field of view, I am running at 105, and my field of view is affected. Now, some people might want independent. Uh, it's going to aim when you aim down sights, your zoom uh, field of view is going to be as usual value. I kind of like to have the same look, so I do go with that affected, which aiming down sights zooms to a closer value of what your field of view is set to. Um, what I would recommend doing, 
I am on PS5 and I know on PS4 or older gen Xbox, this field of view might be a bit different. I would say start with, if you're on older gen, around 85 to 95, maybe up to 97, and make sure you have no screen tearing or anything. And if you don't, go to 100. If it's still okay, go to 105. Anything over 105 for me personally is too much. The wider field of view you get, the smaller targets are going to be in front of you because you're seeing more to the left and right. And it's kind of, you know, not as a deep of a zoom or not good of a zoom, uh, you know, kind of in front. So things in front of you are going to look a little bit further away. So 105 personally for me on new gen is great. Like I said, old gen, I would start with 85, go up to around 97. If you have no screen tearing, no issues, you can go up to 100 or 105. Uh, camera movement, make sure this is less than 50. All the motion blur, depth of field, uh, all this stuff needs to be, uh, t uh, the motion blur and of course the weapon motion blur needs to be off. Depth of field needs to be off, but there is a bug and every time you turn your game off and come back in, it will be set to on. So be sure that you go in and actually turn this off every time you log in. And as you can see, I just turned the game on when recording this video and it was set back to on. I did notice yesterday that it is bugged out and it comes back on every time I load the game back up. Of course, the uh, cast here I have turned off as well. This is the sharpness of the scene rendering is enhanced. I kind of felt, felt like this could cause a few issues with packet loss or, or some other things in games from screen tearing. I did have it on a little bit. I was noticing some odd things going on with the game, so I turned it off. That helped along with demand texture streaming. Now, if you don't have a cap on your internet, which I do not, I have fiber internet, does not have a cap, I, was, I had this on. I was seeing a lot of reports online about people saying they were getting packet burst and they were wrecking, uh, recommending on console to at least turn the on demand texture streaming off along with the cast here and it would help. I have not seen the packet burst since then. Not sure if this absolutely fixed the problem. We'll have to wait and see as I play some more. But if you're not having packet burst issues, I would recommend having the on-demand texture streaming set to on as long as you don't have a cap on your internet data. When it comes to audio, I am running uh, my master volume around 90, music volume zero, dialogue volume 45, dialogue volume in the game is very, very loud, and sound effects volume is set to 100. My hit marker volume value, uh, value is 75. That is default too. It seems to be pretty well, uh, pretty good right there. I have mine set to classic. You can use Vanguard, but I like classic the best. I am using my Astro A40s plugged straight into my PS5 controller. I'm not using my mix amp or anything. The game is a lot louder than it was in uh, beta form. Not like Modern Warfare Loud where the kill streaks will absolutely pierce your ears, but the master volume cut down to 90 is just the sweet spot for me personally. When it comes to audio mix, we do not have the options we've had over the past few years, so I would recommend setting this to whatever you're using. If you're using a soundbar, home theater, use that. Of course, TV for TV speakers, headphones if you're playing with headphones. And night mode, of course, is not bad if you're know, trying to be a little bit quieter at night uh, when low volumes are preferred, but I would recommend one of these three. Uh, until maybe we get some better things down the line, we might get those high, low, you know, boost low, all that kind of stuff later on, but right now, headphones is the best. Kind of just pick whatever you're using. Uh, kill streak music is set to on. You can have this on or off. I really haven't messed with it. Mono audio is set to off, of course. For, uh, my voice chat is off. If you do have it on, if you want to use in-game voice chat, I'm usually in a party when I'm playing, so I would recommend bumping these probably all up to about 40. Uh, the voice chat in-game when I first was playing seemed very, very quiet. Now, when you're on this uh, page here, you can test your, uh, your audio kind of at the top here. It should be L1, R1 for you, but my buttons are flipped. But as you can see at the top above game sound, you can test the campaign audio test and the multiplayer audio test. Just kind of give an idea of what it's going to sound like uh, for whatever you're listening on. When it comes to the interface, of course, mine is set to English default here. Subtitles are off. Uh, subtitle size is default. Text chat, mine is system only. You can turn this on so you can see players uh, texting in the text bar down on the screen down in the right corner or on the screen bar down the right corner. But I just have mine set to system only uh, things. When it comes to the FOV counter, I have this hidden. You can show your field of view counter at all times if you would like. Server latency, I have shown. Packet loss, I have shown. And you can have a console clock turned on so you can see what time of day it is in your time zone. I have that hidden as well, but I really do recommend having server latency and packet loss turned on. Uh, mute sound warning is on. They will give you a sound warning if you want that, but I don't prefer to have that on personally. Uh, or you don't have that prefer, person don't have to prefer to have that off. Excuse me. It displays a red banner and a widget uh, warning when multiple uh, muting voice chat, microphone, game sound, all that good stuff. You can have that on or off, but I do like having that on, so it kind of gives you that warning that it is turned, you know, if you change anything within those, uh, you know, muting voice chat or microphone or game chat.
the telemetry label size. Now this will be what size your server latency and packet loss shows in the corner. I have it set on smaller. It is kind of small. If you're playing on a TV sitting on a couch, it's going to be kind of hard to see. But to me, when you put it on default, which is going to be a little bit larger, it looks kind of odd. It will show you like your, uh, just for example, it will show, you know, your server latency and it has a percent. So it'll say like, let's say you're getting a ping of 15 in the game or 20 in the game. Sometimes it will overlap and that number will be behind the percent or behind the, you know, latency word itself. So personally, I think larger is better by, or by default is better, but smaller looks better overall because it doesn't really overlap the letters. A mini map shape, I would recommend turning it on square because square is going to give you more of a field of view on your mini map. Mini map rotation, of course, is on. Make sure you turn crosshair bobbing off. That is very, very annoying if you leave it on. So make sure that is off. Uh, the compass cardinal direction text, I have it set to letters. You can set it to numbers, whatever you prefer. Uh, this is mainly, you know, if you're going to call out things like uh, to your teammates, if you're used to using the compass, maybe in uh, war zone or something like that. Advanced interface settings, uh, of course, all this stuff down here is just left to normal. I do have this set on, so it shows in-game alert icons, and this is where I was seeing those packet bursts when we were talking about some of those settings earlier in the graphics uh, part of the uh, settings in-game. This is where I was you know, able to see those packet bursts come up, and since I have turned those settings off in graphics, I have not seen those pa uh, packet burst notifications uh, since then. Of course, if you play on keyboard and mouse, you'll have settings here, but I'm, of course, playing on controller. But anyway, guys, those are my settings. As of right now for Call of Duty Vanguard, they've been working really well for me. Hopefully they'll work for you here on console as well. If you like the video, hit the like, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.